This is Locklear Road in Sumter, South Carolina. The August 1976 murder site of the Sumter County Does. You'll have to take my word for it that this is Locklear. I expected to see a road sign here. It's certainly been here in other depictions online, but it's gone now. I was here three years ago, fall 2019, but not here. I was 1.2 miles yonder on the north side of Loch Lair. Yeah, these murders, by all indication, were an event based on I-95. That's just to my left. But there is no ramp here on the south end. There never has been. But 1.2 miles yonder, exit 146 for anyone who's interested, there is a ramp there. It that leads uh, about three quarters of a mile, you get to Loch Lair Road. So if the event had occurred on I-95 and then the perpetrators had looked for the nearest frontage road, dirt road, that would be Loch Lair. Could have been local knowledge. So I always thought, and most of the online images had been of the north side, and that's where I filmed three years ago. But subsequently, I was reading in the Web Sleuth forum, they have an entire sub-forum devoted to this case. About ten years ago, someone who had been in frequent contact with Verna Moore, who was the deputy coroner at the time of the murders, later for decades was the uh, full-fledged coroner, he, uh, he indicated very confidently that it happened, the murders happened on this side. But that made no sense whatsoever since the topography, the one available photograph of detectives leaning alongside the bodies with other uh, police uh, blocking the road, it indicated dense tree cover on both sides. Well, all the online aerials and everything I'd seen of Locklear indicated that was only present on the north side. That's why for years, decades following this case on Unsolved Mysteries in the 90s and forth, I was convinced it had to be on the north side. When I visited in 2019, I did come to this end, the south side, but only for curiosity purposes to say I had done the entire route. Now I'm back. I don't like loose ends. Of course, when I posted the video in 2019, this case was tipped toward resolution. I don't mind betting on the DNA Doe Project as a longtime gambler. That's certainly not the worst investment I ever could have made. Sure enough, they solved the case, as most of you watching this video would know. I believe it was January 2021. Uh, the Sumter County Does were identified as Pamela Mae Buckley, originally from Minnesota, later Colorado Springs, and James Paul Freund of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Now when I visited in 2019, I did take note and I walked down, there's a small local cemetery here. If you go on Google Street View, you notice you cannot advance down Locklear Road, they'll only let you go so far. But I might as well walk down here. It's a small local cemetery. You see a little blob on the right, something that stands out as different. Well, that's what this is. I haven't seen anybody online come over here. William Ezekiel Bill McGelvey Cemetery. And uh, there are a lot of headstones here dating to the uh, 1800s. Or there's Winston Haynes McElveen, died November 18th, 1829. Very nice. I just wanted to give anybody an idea of what this is if you've checked online and seen that one area that stands out as different. But back to the story. I always assumed it was, the murders occurred on the north end because this area was always like this. And all the uh, videos I've seen, all the online accounts I've seen, just blank, barren farmland. You can see the farmland machinery deep in the background there. 
but the picture from the uh, paper in 1976 showed the pine trees on both sides. If you drive up along this area in South Carolina, you see tall, leggy, thin southern pines all over the place, alongside I-95, in the median, just got 40 feet high, very thin, unlike the pines my grandfather had in his backyard, so thick and sturdy he built me a tree house very thoughtfully. I was about eight or nine years old. There was no indication this was ever lined with trees on both sides on the south end of I-95. That's why I was convinced these murders had to be on the north end. Then I started looking at, his, I believe it's historicaerials.com, maybe I'll put a link or two in the description. And they had many overhead views. You see, here's I-95 to my left. You may hear some of the, uh, the traffic noise. They had a lot of aerials of this area, and none of them showed tree cover on the east side here of Locklear. But I noticed eventually there was a gap. There was a long gap with no aerial at all including over the time frame of these murders. So, and then there was a concentration of aerials much deeper when we get to 2000. So I looked, I believe it was a 2002 version. I checked that and sure enough, there was the answer. It's clearly mislabeled. The 2002 historic aerial is not 2002 at all. That's the missing gap. That explains the situation because that 2002 aerial shows dense pine tree cover throughout the east side of Locklear. Not only on this plot, but all out throughout this range, this area. So it must have been, I'm guessing, a project to do with the construction of I-95, this corridor, which was in 1966. You can look at some of the historic aerials from that time frame. You can see the, the trucks disrupting Locklear Road, which used to just cut tamely across here. You used to continue, see the angle in front of me going to the left? Well, at that point, that was straight across, which is now the I-95 corridor. But when I-95 was built, they just curved Locklear, straightened it out, and had it remain on this side, the east end of the freeway, the new I-95. But, for the purposes of explaining this murder, that 2002 misidentified aerial was extremely valuable. This area was loaded with fresh young pine trees, both sides of the road. The cemetery was not visible in the photograph, but it will explain why the commenter on Web Sleuth was correct. It was on this side. It's just the topography was totally different. It must have been a government project connected with I-95. It certainly wasn't one homeowner after another who decided to plant young, thin pines and then take them out 10 years later. It must have been some kind of experiment that failed. So they were pulled and then the uh, farmland restored. So the reason I'm on this end, and this particular area, you can see the power pole in front of me, is the one online view, the picture from the day the bodies were discovered. It shows a detective on the side of the road leaning down alongside the bodies. It showed some of the other police officials and onlookers maybe 50 yards in the background on the opposite side and there's trees on both sides. So apparently what happened is, and you can even see a, uh, a power pole on the left background. The only power poles I see along Locklear are right here in this area. So I would guess that the murders occurred somewhere in this area. Again, it's all without the actual photographs at my disposal. It's a guess, but it's a better guess than when I was here three years ago. So somewhere in this area, could have been back here. The detective is leaning alongside the body and in the distance you see the, the other uh, police cars blocking the road. And on the left-hand side, 
you see a power pole. So this is a closer approximation of where the murders occurred. Some people online who have researched this case have done a great job and one, uh, they found the old articles and one of them said that the uh, killer was apparently thwarted by a fence. He did not expect to be there. He pulled in uh, alongside a tobacco, an old tobacco hut, ran into a fence, turned around, came back to the road. So that could have been somewhere around here. He turns east. This would have been forest area. He can't see. It's past midnight, Sunday night, early August 1976. He goes into the woods, runs into this fence. Okay, his original location is thwarted. He turns around and commits the murders along the side of the road, the final resting place of James and Pamela. All right, that's about it. This place still gives me the creeps. You know, I was here in 2019. I later visited Delphi, Monon High Bridge. That place was tranquil as it could be. There was just a, uh, some nice, serene walking trails where one tragedy occurred. But Locklear Road is entirely different. This place, this is one take, let's put it that way. I'm not starting this video over again. Even if I'd mumbled throughout, this is what you're going to get. But that's it. That's my one uh, revisit to Locklear Road. I just wanted to show the south end, including this cemetery. And this is a better idea of where the murders occurred. Here's a power pole here. I may have even gone too far. That could have been a, the power pole in question. So these murders could have been, as I said, I was in the north end, there were no power poles at all. So it could have been all the way down here. Let me backtrack a little bit here because as I look at it now, the cemetery was not in the picture from, two th from 1976, but it's so far, it's further removed from uh, the dirt road than I remembered, so that wouldn't have been in the picture anyway. However, the only thing that makes me doubt that uh, this would have been about the range for the power pole in play, the only thing that makes me doubt it is there's a, quite a substantial drop off here, which I didn't really see indications of that in the one picture. Regardless, somewhere in this area, the murders occurred late night, 1976. Can you imagine? being driven down this road. They had to know what their fate might be. You know, this case is sad in one respect, is uh, there was so much buildup uh, to it, so much speculation. Of course, there was a lot of talk about them being, uh, well, who he was the what, the son of a, that was the pr predominant theory, son of a Canadian doctor, a strange son, and then he was playing ping pong or pool in a KOA campground around here. That was all glorified nonsense. They were their two early 20s. Somehow they had come to contact with each other. I don't think we'll ever know the details. And there's been no uh, television treatment of this case. Nothing on Dateline or 2020 or any of the Investigation Discovery series. That's a shame in my opinion. Also, none of the family members have come forth. Pamela had many brothers and sisters. She was in a folk trio called Sun Lending. Uh, she also had an ex-husband. Nobody came forward. That's a shame. I don't know why they wouldn't just tell her story. Say that she's great at this, not so good at that. James seemed to have had a smaller family, but we haven't heard from any of them either. Boy, if it were me, I'd be, I'd be on every show. I'd be uh, championing each series to take a look at this case. But for whatever reason, the Doe cases don't attract as much attention as the, just a run-of-the-mill murder case. You know, the Doe cases, they've done one or two on the networks. But other than that, they just like the tried-and-true murder case where they can tease one suspect after another, then get to the correct one and have the prosecutor take a bow. Voila, lazy format, that's it. The Doe cases are more complicated and when there's not a dramatic ending, like if this had been the, uh, what, the Venezuelan connection, that would have garnered some TV shows, even the Canadian version. But when it's just uh, too early to mid-20s, 
Americans who met somewhere along the line and ended up a uh, tragic fate here. Nobody bothers to detail it online. You know, I, I dealt with this case, I researched a lot and spoke a lot about it, wrote a lot of, on Web Sleuth. Well, that won't happen anymore. I'm now banned from Web Sleuth. <laughs> I still don't know what happened. I logged in a few weeks ago. It, it said, it, this is what it said, it said, B Reddit says you're not happy here, therefore you don't belong here. Well, isn't that wonderful? I've heard that about them before, that if you post there, they act like uh, you're their private property. They don't want you participating elsewhere. Well, that's a shame. That's frankly pathetic. I mean, uh, yeah, I post a lot on Reddit, primarily. They've, they've got more uh, subreddits there, more different topics available, all different types of true crime, sports, etc. And they say you're only as strong as your weakest link. Well, in regard to web sleuth, nobody ever has to ask who the weakest link there is. It's a shame, too, because there are a lot of great posters there. And it's just too bad uh, the uh, paranoid and pathetic uh, caliber nature of the person who runs the place. That's it. Okay. I'll post this video online. It's too bad I didn't have this camera and this SD card, micro SD card, during my 2019 trip. I wanted to post longer videos here, Delphi, etc. I just didn't have the storage space. That's about it. Okay, I'm not going to the, uh, the uh, funeral home this time or the, uh, the cemetery. What was it? Bethel United, United Methodist Church Cemetery. It's about a half hour from here. And uh, I've seen online that Pamela's family has got a new headstone for her. That's great. It looks like James does not. So they decided, both families decided to leave them there. That the, seems to be the case most of these Doe situations, and I agree with it. They honor the, uh, the community that, uh, that honored their loved ones and buried them and tried to identify them. It's just I, too bad. I wish they could have a shared headstone. They were known together so long as the Sumter County Does. I'd like to see one there that uh, put that name and that moniker in there along with their, uh, their actual names. All right. One last goodbye to Locklear Road. Somewhere on this side is where the tragedy occurred. What now? Uh, 56 years ago and counting.